Hi everybody, Bye Wickham here. I've got a new toy to try out for you. It is the iSolo by Cloud Vocal. It's a, a brand new product that, um, it's a wireless microphone that attaches to the violin. Um, there's two modes of attaching, but I'll get to that later. And it wirelessly connects to this unit, which is kind of, uh, it's a wireless receiver and DI all in one. And it also has some, uh, a small amount of effects pedal and uh, EQ functionality as well. So, um, uh, and from there, you would go into your amp or into the soundboard uh, via, we've got a quarter inch output. We've also got, that comes with it, um, it's got a quarter inch to XLR adapter specifically for it. Um, so lots and lots of cool stuff here. Um, let's start with uh, when I got it in the mail. I was really impressed because it came in this nifty pretty box and had all sorts of things in it. Um, it had um, the, the microphone and uh, it also has a transducer adapter. Uh, so this can either be a microphone that you place kind of right above your F hole or wherever you think it's going to sound better. Check that out. Got delay turned on right now. Um, but you can also hook this in, which I haven't tried um, because I haven't wanted to mess with my bridge. But you hook this in here, put that under your bridge foot, and it's a piezo transducer. And there's a switch on here that allows you to switch between transducer and mic input. Uh, so whether this is sending a transducer signal or a mic signal to this unit. Um, so that's... Uh, that's another option that this comes with, which is really cool. I personally prefer the mic um, because it has a more authentic violin sound uh, coming to it. In general, you know, this is not specific to this product, but in general, I prefer the acoustic sound of a violin to sound like a violin, whereas an electric is gonna sound like a transducer or sound electric from the get-go. So if we're really trying to replicate the sound of a violin, a microphone is going to give you the most, most authentic and accurate uh, replication of that. Um, so it connects, there, there are actually two options for connecting. Uh, I chose the carpenter jack, which is really slick. Um, oh, hello. It's a very sensitive microphone, but it is pretty directional. Um, so we've got this carpenter jack. It comes off of the violin really nicely, and it's, it's pretty slick like that. I've got it turned on right now, so I'm going to press and hold this button for just a minute, and the green light on the top comes off. Now the microphone's off. Um, but the jack has little pieces of cork, so it doesn't damage your instrument. Uh, and I found that the best place for me to attach it to my violin was right here on the south end of the C bout, and then I mounted it so that the microphone is right kind of over the bottom eye of my ethyl. And I found that to be, to work really nicely uh, on the bass side of the violin. I didn't try it on the treble side, but I may do that another time. I've been playing with this on gigs for the last month or so, and I've really, really enjoyed it. It's worked really nicely. Um, it's light to travel with. Uh, everything that's in the box can fit in this little, approximately six by eight inch um, little carrying case um, that comes with it as well. There is a manual that comes with it that is really useful. It's got good instructions for, that was awesome. Good instructions for pairing the wireless uh, transmitter with the receiver, which is really pretty straightforward. Um, the other mounting option that it comes with is a sticky mounting option, um, which the, the glue is supposed to be instrument safe. I don't trust putting glue attached to my violin varnish. It's an older violin. The varnish is, uh, 
is kind of sensitive. It's not uh, like a lacquer varnish that a lot of new violins have. So I opted for the Carpenter Jack option. Um, but if you have a newer violin that has harder varnish, this would probably work fine. Um, it also comes with a USB charger for the wireless transmitter and microphone, which is nice and small. I, I had seen it in the pictures, and it, it's smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's small and it's light. Um, this is a micro USB adapter and a USB, which there's a USB charger that uses, um, that you can use for this. You can also use it to power your DI box. So you can use it for both of those purposes. It's standard USB, so um, I'm sure 75 other USB power adapters would work just fine for it. Um, but I'm using the one that came with it because it seems like a good idea. Um, it also came with this quarter inch to XLR adapter to hook into a PA system, a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter, and a directional antenna. I chose the omnidirectional antenna, which, you know, uh, I figured this only probably is needed if you have a long distance between you and the microphone. Um, since, generally speaking, I have the microphone and the receiver, you know, both on stage within 15 feet of each other. Um, I, I think it's fine. I walk down the hallway in my house uh, about 30 or 40 feet away. It still worked just fine. When I walked behind a wall, it stopped working so well. So um, that at least gives you an idea of, you know, that it, it works well at least out to 30 or 40 feet without obstructions in the way. Um, so, uh, I'm really, really happy with the sound reproduction of it, um, and also with the features of this. Um, it's just got a bass and treble EQ, so it's not super, uh, you know, it's not a multi-band, I mean, it's multi-band, two bands, uh, EQ, but it's, it's a really nice, nice to be able to just dip your treble or dip your bass a little bit. I ended up dipping my, you know, having my bass point straight up and my treble dip just a little bit to get the sound I wanted. Um, you know, the gain I have set at zero and the master I've got it at less than half. Um, and I've had fun. I haven't used this during my gigs, but I've had a lot of fun here at home playing with the effects. So it has four different effects options. And you can, you can modulate the effects uh, with this effects parameter button here. And you can also change your dry wet blend. So that'll tell you how much of the un, unaffected signal is the dry signal, the wet signal is the affected signal. And it'll show you, you know, decide on what the mix is there. Right now I'm gonna turn it more to the wet because you can hear me through this microphone here in addition to what's coming out of my my little practice amp here. So um, let me give you a little demo. I've got it currently turned on um, the digital delay. This right here is the transmitter strength or the signal strength. You can turn it back and forth between lower strength and the higher strength. And this is the charger port for, for charging the transmitter. So I'm gonna turn my microphone back on. So there's the green light, it's on, and it's off. And I just hold it until this light here, the, e, the light next to EQ on the DI box will turn to solid blue. It was flashing blue before. Um, when the microphone's connected, it goes to solid blue. Now it's connected. And now it's disconnected. This right here gives you an adjustment on the receiver as to whether you are going to be near or far from the receiver with your, with your violin. Um, you also have an input output on the DI box where you can have an additional input of something else coming into the DI box 
and you can mix between the mic and the line. You know, right now I just have the line going in it. You can also add an aux in, uh, eighth inch. Um, there's an ability to put a mute on it. On the back, we've got a sync in and sync out, probably for MIDI sync, not something I'm actually going to use it for. But it's it's really really uh, easy indicator, really clear, full featured, and has a nice user user interface for you know something so small. It's got a lot of a lot of action packed in there. Um, so here we go. Sure, 
if it was due to an ungrounded uh, power source or it was due to um, some sort of uh, interference or you know radio frequency interference in the church where I was playing but there was a little buzz in the unit when I played it at that church um, but every other time I've used it to perform it's performed flawlessly so um, you know as of right now I consider that to be an aberration um, but we'll see as I continue to use this I highly recommend this unit I think it's really well made it's slick it's light um, it travels really easy um, you know and is less complicated than my previous rig I've been using so uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you next time.